Hello grade sixes, uh, so this video, what we're doing is we're talking about the, the hatchet, right? And we're summarizing chapter six to chapter eight. So by now what you should have is you should have chapter summaries from one to eight, right? A visual and a title and kind of the main event that's happened. And you should have, you should have uh, Brian's character development, his analysis, early character analysis done, right? And so six to eight is super important in terms of character development. So is nine, right? Nine is kind of the end of that arc. Right? And so we're going to walk through chapter 6, 7, and 8, hopefully really quickly, just to kind of talk about some of these themes, some of the stuff that's happening. Right? So chapter 6. Right? We start in chapter 6, uh, and it starts off with Brian uh, looking for a place for his shelter. Right? And he's finding some places, and he's trying to stay close to the river. Uh, and what you're actually seeing is his mindset. Right? And how he's always looking for something better. And you can actually really, I think the word for this chapter is how resourceful Brian is. Right? He knows that he needs something to eat, right? That's always constantly on his mind. He's feeling super weak. Just even walking around to find the shelter, he found himself really, really weak. So he starts thinking about uh, a television show. I think it was a survivalist te television show. And he comes up with the idea, like, maybe I can eat a lizard, right? But then he realizes there's not going to be a lot of lizards in the Canadian forest. So he scratches that out. So he keeps looking, though, and he says, well, there may not be lizards, but there, and there may not be beans, but there might be berries. Right? And so he found berries. He found berries, uh, and then he, he, I think he ate a ton of these berries. He ate a ton of these berries, and like a lot, and even though they didn't taste that good, and they had these big pits, he, he ate as much as he could, and he actually brought some back. Right? And as he's kind of falling asleep, he's thinking about that idea of fire. Right? He's thinking about fire, and he's like, it's starting to kind of get into his brain. And how can you do this? And what this does is uh, G Gary Paulson, uh, the author, is he's starting to foreshadow a little bit, right? He's talking about the mindset about how he's always thinking forward, right? I have shelter, now I need food. So what is Brian going to do next? Of course, he's going to go look for food. I have food, now I need fire. So uh, this is happening at the end of the chapter. So what do you think he's probably going to start doing next? Probably start might thinking about how he can make a fire, right? But as he's falling asleep, in Brian's world, I think all was good, right? And in novels, and especially in novels, when you think about chapter six, let me find it really quick. Right? Chapter six is right here. That's as thick as up to chapter six. Okay? So when you think about novels, if you're this deep in the book and there's no conflict, there's going to be some more conflict. It's a nice thing. Like when you start off a movie and all is happy, you just know that something bad's going to happen to those characters. And that's kind of the mindset we got to have, right? So at the end of chapter six, he has food, he has shelter, he's thinking about fire, all is good in his life, until chapter seven, right? And in chapter seven, we wake up, uh, well not we, I was, I was awake when I was reading it, but he starts screaming, he starts calling for his mom because of the berries, right? The berries that he ate were not good for him, he called them gut cherries actually because the how, how much they hurt his insides, right? He was throwing up, and as he was throwing up, he kind of got to his lowest, he got to his weakest, and he started to remember the secret. Right? He started remembering the secret, and after he started convulsing and throwing up, he looked at his own reflection, and there's kind of a symbolic moment where he can't stand the way he looks. Right? If we talk about early, early character analysis, right, he has cuts, he's dirty, his face is swollen uh, from mosquito bites, it's blistered, and he just doesn't recognize himself. So what happens is there's an expression in the uh, in the army, at least back home, right? Is that they gotta break you down before they build you up. And so right here is one of Brian's lowest breakdowns. We are breaking down the character. He looks at himself, he doesn't even like himself. And he feels so much self-pity in that moment and he cries. And he's lonely and he's hurt and he's hungry and he thinks he's ugly and he's afraid. But then his mindset starts to shift in this chapter, right? And he starts to actually call his shelter home, right? And then he starts exploring some more because he realizes he needs food and he finds raspberries, which is awesome. He celebrates, he says, I can't believe my luck. But then as stories go, he's lucky, so he has to come down again and he sees a bear. But there's no conflict, it's just fear, right? He tries to run away. But then he realizes that his survival is more important. The bear didn't want it to mess with him at all, actually. The bear just wanted to get its own raspberries. So he returns to it. And then 
I have this quote, it says, for the first time since the crash, he was not thinking of himself or his own life. So after he returned to get the berries, it ends very similarly to chapter six, where he's happy and he's hopeful and he has a food source, but now he has a food source that won't hurt him, right? He has these raspberries and he knows now not to eat as much as he can, but only a little bit, enough to sustain. And now that he had his raspberries and he's drinking the raspberry juice and he has his shelter, he's not thinking about his survival, but he's just able to be, and that's really peaceful. From a, early in the chapter when he had so much self-pity to this now, which brings us to chapter eight. Once again, Gary Paulson loves introducing the chapter with some conflict, and that conflict this time happens to be an intruder, right? So when something's in his shelter, he can hear it slithering around, he can smell it. So what does he do? He throws his hatchet, right? He throws his hatchet, and then he's, he misses clearly whatever it is because it's dark, he can't see, but he sees these trails of sparks. Once again, if you've already read chapter six, if you haven't, that's an important thing. Because what is he trying to make? What is the thing that's in his head from chapter six? He had his berries, but he needed something, an F word, a fire, right? How do we create fire? So that's gonna become an important detail. What happens though is he's thrashing around, and next thing you know, he has a bunch of needles in his calf, right? In the fleshy part of his calf, and it's a porcupine, okay? And he's tearing them out, and he actually says it tears when it's set out because a lot of times uh, porcupine needles, they're barbed, right? They're barbed so then when you pull them out, it's actually hard to do that, it's also very dangerous. So he's ripping them out because he knows he can stay in. And once again, he kind of has another breakdown. And this seems to be a trend with Brian is where he has everything going for him, right? Everything good, but then he comes down hard again and he, fe and he feels so sorry for himself. The same self-pity from chapter seven, but this time, this is an actually a really important moment in his, in his mindset for chapter eight. He stops feeling the self-pity and he say, and you realize feeling sorry for yourself doesn't work, right? Feeling sorry for yourself doesn't work. He said, it's just not productive. And this is, it's such a cool mindset that he has. I'm just trying to find the rest of chapter eight. So chapter eight then, after he realized he can't feel sorry for himself, he starts kind of gathering what he needs to do and the big thing that he needs to do is he needs to have that fire, right? He, and he, he, he passes out and he has that dream about that fire. He has uh, Terry, he has his dad gesturing to what he can do and he realizes that the key to the fire is the hatchet because it can create the sparks, okay? So before you, hopefully you'll watch this before you read chapter nine. If you don't, that's okay. But I think it really sets it up because if you, th again, at the end of chapter nine, at the end of chapter eight, he says the hatchet is the key. So what are we probably going to investigate in chapter nine? Can the hatchet be the key? Right? Or is Brian going to find more conflict? So this is a summary. Uh, yeah, that's basically what, we, what we've read so far. We're going to keep having small little kind of sessions like this to kind of talk about it. Hopefully you watch these so you can get a deeper understanding of the novel. All right, have a good day, guys.